All right, we're back with another edition of the Scotty No Show. Uh, we have Bryson on this week. Bryson, how are you doing? I'm doing pretty well, Scotty. How are you doing this week? Good. Uh, I'm going to start you off with a little bit of a trivia question. Is that okay? Yeah, go for it. So Aberdeen is one of five cities in this Midwest state with more than 20,000 people. What is this state? Uh, what is West Virginia? <laughs> uh, <laughs> and... <laughs> Dude, that's not the Midwest, just because it has a West in it. <laughs> yeah, that's one of the funnier. Uh... Ooh, is that Jeopardy. C4 I saw? Uh, no, nah, that's Nas. Oh, okay. But... Um. But yeah, that was a, a question on Jeopardy. Of course, uh, for those that aren't aware, what uh, what town are you in right now? Uh, I'm in Aberdeen right now. <laughs> so, it's like, heck yeah, people people being real smart on Jeopardy. Um, not much has really been happening since the Super Bowl, honestly. Yeah, it's been pretty dry in the world of sports, like other than some Winter Olympic stuff. Not a yeah, time, but... which I... I have a problem with the Winter Olympics. They they don't allow you to like share clips or do any like video. I things. I agree too. Like like yeah. How I, are we? <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> totally goofed that. My bad. You go first. I was just gonna say like I don't like how like selective it almost seems like the Winter Olympics are because like. You think about it like any sport, basketball. What what does it cost to go play basketball? A Not membership much. at the Y, maybe a pair of shoes. How much does it cost to go skiing? Oh, just like six hundred dollars a day. Huh. Yeah. Weird that that's not more popular in in Arizona. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Just little things like that. I don't really like, but. But like socially, like I wasn't aware of what was on when it was on anything like yeah. that. Yeah. No, for sure. Um, we did have the all-star break in the NBA. Uh, the slam dunk contest sucked. I I honestly didn't even see it. What, you, what went down? You were in. You were at Regions. That's why you didn't oh, see it. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, the three-point contest was won by Carl Anthony Towns. Um, mm-hmm. The skills competition, I don't really know who won that. All I know is that Scotty Barnes and Tyrese Maxey did the absolute worst job of – playing basketball that I've ever seen pro basketball players do. Yeah, probably. They, mi- they missed seven straight layups. They are pro <laughs> basketball players. How do you miss seven layups? Uh, I, yeah, man, uh, they, they forgot to go to practice that week. Uh, uh, I don't really know what to say. Yeah, that's that's wild, though, that as, like, open layups, missing that as a professional athlete. Yeah. Um, Jawan Howard, the Michigan coach, uh, he got mm-hmm. suspended for five games okay. for, pu- for punching uh, an assistant uh, coach for Wisconsin. Um, that assistant coach is Joe Krabenhoff. Oh uh, I don't know if you know who that is. Uh, I'm not familiar. But he is a former Sioux Falls Roosevelt Rough Rider. Really? That's pretty and, cool, actually. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, he used to play at uh at Wisconsin. Used to yeah. be an assistant coach at SDSU when I was there. Oh really? Okay, mm-hmm. that's pretty cool. Um, so yeah, that's uh that happened, rightfully so. Yeah, no, for sure. Like, that's it's no way to conduct yourself. Yeah. Um, James Booknight, who used to play for UConn, this is what this is my favorite story of the week. Okay. James. James Booknight, um, he used to play basketball for UConn. Mm -hmm. He goes to a game. uh, He he now plays for the Charlotte Hornets. It's the all-star break, so he can do whatever he wants. So he goes to the UConn game, gets ejected as a fan. As a fan, he gets ejected from the game. So he goes, he leaves, gets back, comes back in, and sits in the student section. (laughs) I believe that is called the life hack, Scotty. <laughs> I love that. That's freaking awesome. That's great. I love that. But, um, you know, we're going to get to the uh, reason. Oh, before we get to uh, 
state wrestling, our state wrestling yeah. preview. The Undertaker is going into the WWE Hall of Fame. I saw that. That's pretty exciting. Mm-hmm. Um, no word yet on who's inducting him, if they're even going to do other people inducting wrestlers type of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's happening. Also, Logan Paul is supposedly wrestling. He's uh, he's going to be tag teaming with The Miz to go against Ray and Dominic Mysterio. <laughs> I saw that. God, I'm pissed about that. I hate Logan Paul so much. I hate him less than Jake Paul. Jake Paul is like one of the worst people on the planet. I just hate that guy. But like, you know what this is going to lead to, right? I have no idea. Logan Paul is going to get a 619 right to the face. God, I hope so. <laughs> catch a catch a hurricane rana from the top rope. It that that takes some uh athleticism from the other guy too. So who yeah, knows if true. he has that. I don't know. Co- Logan Paul was a college wrestler for somewhere. I don't was know if he? aware of it. Yeah. Probably yeah, in Ohio. So- I I know he's an Ohio guy. Most likely. I'm not sure if he was D1 or D2, but I'm pretty sure he was pretty good in college. So yeah. I could I could see him having some athleticism. Um, we're going to get into our state wrestling preview. I have all of the uh, local area wrestlers named. Okay. I don't have I don't have their matchups, mm-hmm. but I have uh, the local area wrestlers and then five extra wrestlers from non area schools. To okay. Watch out for. Perfect. So, uh, first, we're going to go with Lyman. Okay. Sounds I'm good. A, I'm, I'm going to rattle off uh, their uh, their wrestlers. At 120 pounds, you have a freshman, Braden Olmkamp, record of 32 and 24. Yep. Okay. What, oh, you want to you oh. ha- uh, say some you thoughts? Can, uh, you can start it out. I can, I can uh, go after you with uh, some thoughts on, on – Bredo and all the rest of the guys. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Um, So I looked at Bredo's bracket and it looks like he's going to have someone from, I think, Miller Highmore, maybe. I think. So Hoffman, probably. I know Gunner has a Hoffman. I don't remember. I can't remember who Bredo has. It should be a good match, though. Um, I think it should be pretty competitive and. In, in terms of from, like, after looking at that 120-pound bracket, there's some really good kids in there. So he's got the right bracket to, to get through for him if he's going to. He's going to have to wrestle really well, obviously. Like, yeah. you, don't get, you don't get into placements wrestling, wrestling poorly. But yeah, there's, like, there's another like there's, kid in his bracket that we're going to talk about, of course. There's some people with some really solid technique and – really good competition there's no slouches in that bracket like 120 is really tough so i i think he could get through it's just a matter of doing it so best of luck to best of luck to bredo at 132 you have a sophomore kellen griffith record of 30 and 9 yep now i don't remember who he has i i want to say it looked like it was a a pretty winnable match though and then if, if he were to win that, he would wrestle against the one seed, which is Owen Hansen from Burt Gregory. It was real tough. But it, it doesn't happen very often, but Hansen makes mistakes. I, uh, Hansen only lost once this year, but he got pinned. He got caught in a, caught in a move. So if, if Kellen can get to that spot, then, like, I'm not saying – Kellen's as good as Owen Hansen or anything, but I, if he gets lucky with a move and is is competent, I think I I wouldn't rule us out of it. That's all I'm gonna say. Yep. Yeah. At one thirty eight, uh, a senior Shiloh Mowry record of forty one and fifteen. Now Shiloh has about the best draw he could have for this, so. Shiloh's going to have to wrestle against Braden Weiss, who was from Hill City, but now goes to Custer. <laughs> Not even going to go into that. I, 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 I love how we, we, we bring that up every time we talk about him. Well, when <laughs> I wrestled him, he was from Hill City. So 
always gonna remember it that way. Uh, no, it it looks like Shiloh only wrestled him once this season, and he beat him in overtime. It was a good match, and he beat him on um, on a rolled ankle that he was limping on pretty good. So, at full health, I think Shiloh has a really significant chance at winning that match. Following that, he'll have uh, if he were to win that. You would have Kale Larson from Webster, who is mm-hmm. the number one seed, who I also wrestled against back in the day a couple <laughs> of times. It's kind of funny, but uh, he's not the number one seed. And, you know, I've, I've seen Kale wrestle, and he's, he's good, but I think Shiloh could give him a really good match. And if Shiloh – I wouldn't put a pass Shiloh to win that match and go into the semis. If he were to lose, he would have – you would have to beat uh, – the loser on the other side of the bracket, which is going to be in the in the eight out of the eight hole, which is right where you want to be, because that's going to give you the the best chance of winning that match. So, Shiloh has a good chance. Um, before we get to this next wrestler, I have to ask: Do you guys have uh, awards at the end of the year for for wrestling? Yeah, yeah, we do. Okay, because if I had to give anybody most improved wrestler. It might be this guy. It's at 152. It's Tance Wagner, a junior, oh at 40, 49 and five. Tance Wagner, what a kid, man. He is, he's going places. Like next year, like I, I see him taking top four. And I think he could this year too. But like Tance is easily the strongest kid in the state, like without a doubt, at 152. Like, there's been people with better technique and people who might be a little bit faster. No one is stronger than Tance. Tance is, Tance is a horse. He's a very strong kid. Um, didn't grow up wrestling a lot. Kind of joined back in middle school to, so he could hang out with his friends like Gunner and Shiloh and them. And then it's just gotten to be really solid in the last couple of years. And He's he's gonna have a really tough match against I think Jack Peters of Winter, right away. Yep. yep. Some someone from Winter. It's it's it, it's it's Peters. But I think that's a winnable match. If we can win that, then we'll we'll be set. If we if we lose, we're gonna have to we're gonna have to wrestle a really tough match against either Richardson from Canton or Peterson from Phillip. So what is this we talk? It's not a well, tag I, team I'm match. Form, I'm former Lyman alumni. I, I consider <laughs> I consider myself part of that team. It's not a tag team match. You're not gonna tag in and wrestle for him. <laughs> not gonna not gonna give him an, an elbow or, or a stone cold stunner, but not yeah, Tesla. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, have, we'll have a tough match following that if if he loses to Peters, but it Tance's Tance has had a really good season this year. Been been ranked pretty highly all the way through. It's unfortunate because some some really good kids from the 160 pound weight class cut down to 152. So now they're in his weight class. Oh. Uh, Grayson Hansen from Kimball White Lake is one of them who I'm pretty good but or who I used to be pretty good buddies with. But it's gotten a little bit tougher since the beginning of the year, but Tance is Tance has done good things all season and I think I think he'll get through. Also, if Tance should place at this state tournament, that means he will have won two matches, which will get him the uh the school record for most wins in the season. Formerly or still held by my brother, actually. Oh which is my 50 god. And five. <laughs> oh my god. All right. Well, um, Gonna, I'm gonna remember that. Uh, 170 at um, it's a uh, sophomore. It's Rory McManus, record of 37 and 16. Uh, of course, he got here by upsetting, if you want to call it an upset, uh, Levi Stover in the finals at Regions. Um, I may or may not have told him a few things before that match. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. But your thoughts. All right, so uh, with Rory, um, another another super strong kid. Like, 
he he and Tans were in the gym a lot this summer and like all the guys were but those two like especially anytime I was down there I would usually see one of them so Rory is a super strong kid and I think I can't remember who he has right out right out of the gates of the bracket but it looked like if he was going to place, he had winnable matches to do it. Cause I think he drew into the seven or the eight hole also, which means uh, either in your first match or in the heartbreak round, you'll have to be the seven or the eight seed, which is where you want to be. Yep. Um, we have two more in this, uh, in this uh, run of uh, wrestlers. At 182, Gunnar Johnson Jr., 40 and 13. Uh, thankfully, this year I did not accidentally write Gloria Johnson. <laughs> um, happy about that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I believe Gunnar got second at uh, Regions, did he not? He did. Um, I I don't have a ton to report on that. We just. We didn't wrestle our bet. He didn't wrestle his best. I guess I wasn't wrestling. I was just losing my <laughs> voice at the time. But, uh, I I looked at the bracket and he's he's where he wants to be. Gunner has one one of the best draws of our guys. Gunner has is going to have Hoffman right away from Miller Highmore, and that looks like a pretty winnable match. And if he loses that in the heartbreak round, I think he'll have the same kid we just barely lost to from from Mobridge. And I think maybe this time we'll be able to take care of business a little bit better and he'll be able to pull through and secure a state medal. And then finally at 285, you have Louis Theory, a sophomore 29 and 13 record. Now Louis Theory is probably who I would give my most improved to either him or Brady. Really? Cause yeah, well, Tance has been good for the past three years. He's he's had state tournament appearances as a freshman, sophomore, and as a junior now. Um, and his he's been pretty dominant the past two years as a as a one uh, a one forty five or one fifty two pounder. And then Bredo has just really came into his own this season and has just has shown if, a lot of a lot of growth. And if anything, give Tance MVP. Tance MVP, yeah, probably. And, like, he's – Louis, though, Louis didn't qualify for the state tournament the last two years. Uh, he won his first – he won his first tournament this year. He won a couple, I think, if I'm mm -hmm. not mistaken. Uh, he was able to win the Hot Springs won. tournament. Yep. And I remember Ian and I both losing our minds when it happened. We were so excited. And – it's it's huge for him to to make this state tournament like that. He's never made it before, and I couldn't be more excited for him. Did he win the monster? He did. No one from Lyman won the monster. Oh. Um, I do know that uh, this. I believe there's what two, maybe three people that joined the 100 win club from Lyman this year. Yep, Tance did. Uh, Gunner did. Uh, I'm not sure who else did. Shiloh hit 185 ish yeah. or something like that. Did Kellen? Shiloh now? I feel like Kellen might have last year, though. Honestly. Oh, okay. It might be he might have this year, but um, next we're uh like you you have like what 20 teams in your region? Uh, yeah, something like that. 15, 20 teams. Yeah. Um, next we go to Pier. Uh, okay. Who do you who do you know is in their region? Uh, it's a weird region there. It is. It, it is a weird, isn't really like weird. Mitchell region. and Huron and yep. Is that uh, if Mitchell and Huron is in it? I'm just gonna guess some neighboring areas. I, maybe I, like I, I will. I will let you know. So you got Aberdeen Central. Okay. Chamberlain. Okay. Cheyenne Eagle Butte Dupree. Okay. Huron. This is where it gets really weird. Millbank, which is where Regents was. Oh, my God. I know. That's a long ways from Pierre. That would suck to drive. Mitchell and Todd County. Oof, that's 
that'd be a pretty tough region. I'm not going to lie. There's, you, you there's think some, so? Yeah. Aberdeen Central has a fantastic coach uh, by the name True. of Donnie Bowden, who used to wrestle with Ian back when they were here at Northern. Um, so they always have good kids. Millbank regularly has a, a few pretty tough kids. Mitchell. Mitchell has some good ones every once in a while. Uh, Todd County has some good kids. Like, And don't get me wrong, Pierce is a really solid program, but there's there's good kids everywhere. Yeah. So I think I think they, that's probably a pretty tough region. And let's not forget Chamberlain has a hut maker. Yeah, Noah Hutmaker. He's he's following his brother's footsteps. I'm hoping maybe this hut hutmaker will wrestle in college because yeah. I I just wish Nash was still wrestling. I think he'd be, uh, dude, think he'd be an animal. We, we talk about it every time you're on here, and I think I, I, I agree every single time. And I mean, it makes more sense. Like, there's there's no life after wrestling, really. Like, there's it's getting closer to that, but with like Rudis having its whole thing. But is, is that how you pronounce it? It's Rudis, yeah. I thought it was Rudy's. No, it's Rudis. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, damn, Rudy. <laughs> no. No, no, not, not not even in a little. No, but, uh, um, but they qualified all fourteen wrestlers. That's pretty exciting. Yeah, um, I don't know not, if they've ever done teams that. Do that. I don't know if they've ever done that before. The most I can remember is thirteen. Um, that's still impressive, though. Yeah, some of these guys you may know, um, from seeing them at the monster. Yeah, I I definitely know a few names if you if you were to throw them out there. So 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 we're gonna go through them all. Um, okay. Alex Odakoven at one oh six eighth grader thirty eight and eight um, rings a bell. I believe we called one of his matches. I think we did. It was either we, him or his brothers. Maybe does he have a brother? No, but okay. Yeah, we definitely well, talked about it. Then. He do, I think he does, but I don't think I don't think he's in high school yet. Okay. But um at 113, Lincoln Schoenhard, eighth grader, 20 and 15 record. We definitely okay. called one of his because you, yeah. you 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 talked about uh Jack Schoenhard, I think. Yep, from Rapid City Stevens. Um, and this is where th- th- these are two of my favorites. At 120, Noah Williams, a senior, 32 and 18. At 126, his twin brother, Nate Williams, senior, 33 and 17. That's um, that's pretty cool to, to have two brothers who get to who get to train that way. Like the Termans were that way too, and it's pretty sweet that they get a chance to do it that way. And an assistant coach on the peer team, Eric Williams, their older brother. Nice. Um, at 132, Tristan Spencer, a sophomore, 29 and 13 record. I don't think I know that name. We might have called one of his matches, but I don't think I know that name specifically. At 138, Blake Judson, senior, 41 and 5. We definitely called one of his. Yeah, I, I know that name. He wrestled 113-ish around the same time I did a couple of years ago. So I don't think I ever wrestled them, but I definitely heard the name a few times. Yeah, um, you you rarely, if ever, run into Pierre. I feel like. No, we we run into him at the monster, and I think that's about it. Because I don't think there are any of our other stuff. Yep. Um, at one forty-five, he's been injured for ninety percent of the season. It's Hayden Schaefer. He's a senior, nine and three record. Uh, you might remember him best for getting a pin, uh, to win the state dual title for yep. Pierre here last year i i remember hearing about that because i couldn't go because it was in rapid and that'd be like a six hour drive from aberdeen not six five still though but yep which by the way speaking of that take a little pause here at 145 here okay. uh what what do you think of the uh um cat uh card only slash clear bag policy at at the uh, premier center i don't know i like it but i mean a lot of people I understand don't. it 
I understand it because, like, if you could bring bags in, you could sneak food in, yeah, sneak drinks in, and I definitely understand. Like from from like a customer side, it's like it makes sense when you charge nine dollars for a pop or or thirteen dollars for a sandwich. It's like, well, yeah, no one no one wants to pay that. That's that's ridiculous. But I understand it from from uh from their perspective also like one you could deal with some safety issues like what if someone brings in um like a weapon like a firearm or or something like that or you could see it as the whole thing of like well we don't want people sneaking in uh their their own stuff so i get it i don't like it just that's just me though um let's also uh Remember that the Premier Center is owned by Danny Sanford. Um, of course, you know, there's the Premier Bank. So yeah. uh, it's run by somebody who owns a bank. So do you think he's going to want cash or do you think he's going to want credit? He's going to want cash. No, he's going to want credit. He's going to want you to is use. It? Yeah, he's going to want you to use uh, oh, the credit card. Yeah because that way they can run more yeah things through it yeah yeah the numbers look bigger yeah i hear that yep so now we go back here we got 152 deacon huska uh junior 25 and 10 record Mm -hmm. i think i know that name also but not not super familiar 160 Jaden weeby junior 28 and 17 record uh yep no don't know um he's i i I like him i i yeah i i think he has uh he has potential to at least place yeah um you know he's you know also i mean great family the weebies are known here for wrestling um yeah so uh 170 lucas chamberlain uh, sophomore 31 and 14 record yep. uh he he was one of six uh, uh region champions for the uh govs last that's week that's pretty cool yeah um probably up there for most improved for for peer honestly yeah for sure for sure um at 182 chance sarda sophomore 28 and 17 record yeah um 195 gavin stotts junior 26 and 17 record mm-hmm. uh here's one that i know you'll remember probably because i think we called one of his matches uh 220 it's uh elijah bucci uh freshman 18 and 17 record okay and then finally uh mr uh doesn't smile at all himself uh 285 Joshua Rydberg Jr. 29 and I think that's either 10 or 20. I can't read my own writing. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. No, the, I, kid, the, the kid doesn't smile. <laughs> yeah. Some people are. Uh, although his mom did get a picture of him smiling and sent it to me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> what? No way. I'm keeping <laughs> this. This will never happen again. Yeah. But yeah, but, what what what's your thoughts on that? Uh you know it's always pretty cool when you have a team that qualifies everyone. Uh, we, I don't think we've ever had one of those. I know that Winner has been close with that. I know that Canton's done it a few times, and it's Phillip, always maybe Philip maybe yeah. It's it's pretty cool and exciting when you have a team that's just got that much like talent and potential and then it all pans out the way you hope it does so they all got to go like that's also got to be a great like team building like thing because you you all did it and you all did it on your own but you wouldn't be there without your without your training buddies so you kind of all did it together so that's i think it's pretty cool and now believe it or not we're going to go to the girl side of things we're gonna switch we're gonna switch things up here. Okay. This area, I know nothing. Oh, 
I, I'm sure I, you don't. I'm sure you don't. That's why. That's why I'm here. Yeah, I um, don't think none, none of the girls. At 106, this is this is also for Pierre. At okay. 106, uh, Sydney Yurig, sophomore, 31 and seven. I believe mm-hmm. you probably know her dad. Chad. Maybe. Oh, I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so uh, obviously, wrestling runs in the Yurig family. Uh, mm-hmm. I expect great things from her. Yeah, for sure. Uh, at 113, uh, Nevea, I, I don't know how this is supposed to be pronounced. Baddy or b- body, uh, bad, I, I don't know. <laughs> uh, junior, uh, 10 and 22 record. Yeah. Um, I, uh... Yeah, I don't know how it's, it's spelled B A A D E. How, how, how do you pronounce that? Uh, I think that's baddie. Um, I could be wrong. It could be okay. bad. But okay, at 120, Danny Rinksmeyer, freshman 20 and 23 record. Rinksmeyer, does is her dad like or an uncle of hers like a ref? I feel like Rinksmeyer is a ref's name. Possibly, I could be wrong. let me check something here real quick. I gotta, all right, all right. Um, just I had to uh. Make sure that something was in the mail from somebody. Never mind. Yeah. <laughs> uh, at 126, I'm not sure if she's actually wrestling because last time I checked, she has a knee brace. But um, mm-hmm. it's Hattie Baldwin, a junior, 22 and 13 record. Um, okay. Again, again, last time I checked, she had a knee brace on. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know if she's going to be wrestling. Um, yeah. So. Um, I, I but, couldn't tell you. But she's she's listed. She she's one of the people listed. Mm-hmm. Um, at one thirty two, this is where it gets good. Okay. This is uh, Gianna Stangland Jr. thirty four and three record. Okay. Really good wrestler. Really good. Yeah. One one of our standouts. For at sure, one four sure. at one at one forty two, I believe you probably know her dad if you've ever seen Pierre wrestle. He's yep. the coach. Okay. Um, it's it's Abby Lewis, seventh grader, okay. thirty-eight and six record. That's pretty sweet for a seventh grader, thirty-eight and six. Woo wee! Uh, no, that's that's pretty good. Yeah. Um, at one fifty-four, Ireland Templeton, freshman, twenty-six and seven record. Okay, that's pretty good too. Not there, not that uh, pretty good one. Um, at one seventy, uh, her brother has been on the show before. It's Emily Larson, sophomore, oh, okay. twenty-five and sixteen record. Mm-hmm. Um, her brother, uh, God damn, what is his name? Jacob has been on the show it. before. Okay. Um, at one ninety, it's a uh, two-time state champion, uh, one time in tennis, one time in girls wrestling last year. It's okay. Marley. It's Marley Shorter, junior, fourteen and two record. Uh, she's coming off of a uh, dislocated elbow, I believe. But Ooh, okay. um, that, that, that's why that explains why it's only 14 and two and not like 30 and however many. Yeah. But uh, I expect another state championship. Hopefully. That'd be pretty sweet. And then at 285, uh, Sierra McFarlane, freshman, mm-hmm. 29 and two record. I also expect another state championship because she won state last year. Yeah. No, it'd be pretty huge if if Pierre got to bring home a couple of state champions and if nothing else, state championships. Like, yeah, yeah, I, I'm sure they're probably going to keep like a girls score and have like a girls state champion. I, I wonder I, if that's coming in the near future or if that's a thing this year. I I really don't know. I, I have no clue. I have no clue. Yeah. Um. By the way, I don't have any of the dual because I. I have no, I mean, Pierre, Pierre does play Harrisburg in the uh, yeah. first one, uh, yeah, so. in the first round, but then they have to run into like Brandon Valley and Brandon Valley. Brandon Valley is freaking really salty. Good. Brandon Valley is really good. I, I've got a few buddies who were there who yep. are both what? seated like number one in their bracket. And but, one of them is signed with ASU already. So that's who's that? 
Damian Shunky. Oh uh, yeah, 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 yeah. He's won state a couple of times. This, yeah, I think this might be his third or fourth that he's going for. Yep. But nah, he's he's real salty, and his brothers too. Um, Navarro, Shunky. Navarro, Shunky. Yeah. Yep. Navarro's good too. Um, but yeah, that's th- those are the peer girls. Lots of uh, lots of great talent. Obviously, yeah. obviously the uh, success of the boys team kind of rubs off on the girls team a little bit there. Mm-hmm. Um, now we go to Stanley County. These are three guys that I'm sure you are well aware of. Mm-hmm. At 120, uh, Chase Hansen Jr., yep. 34 and 11. Correct me if I'm, I, if I'm wrong. Have you wrestled? Did you wrestle him? Yeah, I wrestled him a couple of times as a junior. Okay. He's he's a good dude. Uh we weren't ever super tight, but like my my senior year, like when I was wrestling 113 and he was wrestling 106, uh we usually in finals we we ended up being on like the same side for face offs and we we kind of got to be buddies that way because just through like casual like kind of and not having to wrestle each other anymore. It was like, okay, I, I don't hate you as much anymore. You're, you're, you're pretty all right. And I, I think I think we both like kind of got to that that point. And yeah. You never not. You never had to wrestle against JD Carter, did you? No, JD was bigger and kind of before my time. Oh. I was JD, I think, was a senior, maybe when I was a sophomore or a junior. Okay, yeah, yeah, that makes sense. He was he was always a lot bigger than I was though. I love JD. I, yeah, he's I, I a love, nice kid too. Loves his skittles. <laughs> <laughs> what? Um, I I interviewed him one time and he said, you know, I have to have my skittles during every like state tournament or every tournament yeah. that I have. It's That's like awesome. he's like he, he's like the uh, the wrestling version of Marshawn Lynch in that way, I guess. Um. At 145, Colton Brady, freshman, 36 and 24. Um, if there were to be a most improved wrestler for San Lee County, this would be him. Uh, your thoughts? Uh, yeah, I think I think that's a pretty good pick. I think, although, like, there's been a lot of uh, guys on that team who I think have showed some growth. I haven't like obviously i haven't seen everyone because i pretty much follow linemen only you're a big rogo guy aren't you i i wrestled him a few times (laughs) (laughs) i think i wrestled him like a few times as a senior and i i know that you're you're friends with shaley topo a little bit oh Uh, oh boy one time all right so one time after i wrestled him like I got off the mat and I like went back up to my stuff and she was just chilling there. And she's like, dude, why'd you have to take his cookies like that? I was like, what? <laughs> it, was the, it was the weirdest thing I've ever been told, but it was kind of funny at the time. Uh, and then at 170, um, it's Levi Stover, senior 31 and 12 record. It's also, he's also a uh, Maverick Johnson's favorite Stanley County person, I think. <laughs> Oh, oh, Stover, he's he's a good dude. Yeah, he's he's a goober. It was really funny at the state tournament when he walks by us and he was singing TikTok by Kesha. <laughs> <laughs> what? What? He just really. I don't remember who I was standing next to. It might have been. It might have been you. It might have been Ian. And he just I wasn't looks over there. and just. I'm talking. Everybody get. <laughs> I was just like dying on the side of the mat and it was, oh. it was great yeah but, i was not there so i don't i don't know what you're talking about so <laughs> no, i've got i've gotten to know levi a little bit he he used to wrestle tyrone and oh that's right he, he did because ty at the monster i saw ty and he looks over at at stover and he's like that motherfucker's still here <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, I've, like, I've yeah, had that yeah, with a few wrestlers. Like, how have they not graduated yet? Um, now we're going back to the girls for a brief okay. little uh little minute. Yeah. 
Uh, this is Sully Butch's girls. Oh my god, they've got some hammers, dude. They've got some really tough oh, girls. Oh, what I've heard. we're gonna we're gonna talk about them at 120. It's Tawny Yellowhawk, seventh grader, 18 and four record. Her brother's pretty good if I'm if I'm thinking right. Chase. Chase. Yellowhawk. Yep. Yep. What's he wrestled like 45 this year? I think he was at Pro- 38 last year. Probably. I think he placed seventh or eighth. Yeah. Um he's there, there there's no Sully Beach boys that made it, unfortunately. That's that's unfortunate. Um, but at 126, you have Kateri Yellowhawk, eighth grader, mm-hmm. 16 and 7 record. Yeah. Okay, so um, sisters, I'm guessing. I, be- I believe so. I I actually caught them wrestling each other at the monster, <laughs> which was kind of funny, I thought. Yeah, probably. That's got to be a weird car ride home. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and at 190, uh, this is one of my favorites. Uh, it's Sage Heath. She's a junior, 11 and 5 record. Uh, I believe her dad might be an assistant coach for the girls. Okay. On the girl side. I mean, obviously Brady runs the show. Yeah. But um, which I love Brady Weishuttle. Oh my god. Yeah. He's he's <laughs> such a nice guy. He's a, he's a really good dude. Oh yeah. Um, but yeah, Sage, awesome, awesome girl. Um, mm-hmm. honestly, I, I mean, I don't know what to expect from the uh, Sully Beach girls. All I know is that they will not give up. If they, yeah, yeah, they they are scrappy. Yeah, no, that's that's how a lot of those solid beats wrestlers used to be though. Just wrestle to the bare end. Yeah, who did did you wrestle anybody from solid beats or were you always a uh, forfeit victory for? In, no, I you... wrestled someone from there. I don't remember what his name was though. Okay. Uh, was but... it any hills or anything like that? I don't think so. It's kind of funny. My cousin used to wrestle for Sully Beats back when Ian wrestled. Was that Abbott? Yeah, Kelly Abbott. Yeah. Um, and now we have our other uh, things. There's two of these I'm going to rattle off um, right at the end. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, three of them are in the same weight class, in the same uh, class as well. And I, I think it's honestly the best class. But uh-huh. but but first at 106, it's Tanner Millard, freshman, Lee Deadwood, 25 and 12 record. I wonder who he's related to. God, I hope it's I hope it's you or Jake. Oh, it's definitely me. <laughs> it's nice. definitely both of us. <laughs> yeah, that, that is cousin Justin's uh son. Um I believe he got third at Regions. Um, mm-hmm. At 220, it's the Lone Ranger himself. It's Tanner Davis, senior, Hill City, 17 6 record. Yep. Um, at 145, it's a guy who we, you and I have talked about from time to time. Okay. He's a senior from Newell. His name is Chase Vanderboom. Yep. 47 and nine. I just love his name. I love, I love the hair. It's got a little bit of a <laughs> mullet going. I, I just love everything about him. Yeah. He's, he's a goober. I, <laughs> <laughs> I used to wrestle him when I was, I think a sophomore maybe. And you know, he's, he's just been constantly getting better. Like each year been qualifying for the state tournament. I think almost every year and just he's been he's seated pretty high at 145 isn't he like six or seven something like that um no like he's he's a pretty good kid like i i generally hope that he does well and now we get to the villain portion of this um (laughs) i think you i think you know why i say the villains um Because in the Region 3B tournament, they decided, oh, hey, yeah, let's go with a double forfeit so we can avoid Caden Keezer from winner. Um, It's Carter Lenz, a junior from Kimball White Lake Platte Gettys, 32 and 11 record, and Drew Gerlach from 
Mount Vernon, Plankinton, Corsica, Stickney. He's a junior, 32 and 11 record as well. Okay. You, you don't like those guys? Well, the, the, a double forfeit? Like, your team doesn't get a point then. Yeah, but, like, were they really going to beat Keezer, do you think? Well, at least try. I Okay, I hear that, and I definitely, like, I know, like, for a fact, Chad would be like, go out and wrestle. But at the same time, I understand that from, like, a coaching perspective, where Kimball White Lake is seated number one, it wouldn't do them any good for Carter Lenz to go and get hurt when they have a chance of bringing home a team title. And Mount Vernon Plankington, I think, has a chance at getting some team points. So if they didn't want him to get hurt either, I can definitely understand that. They're going to run into each other. They are, but, I mean, I don't know. Get it over with. Rip the Band-Aid off. I I agree, but I can understand from a coaching perspective why you would have your wrestlers do that. Yeah. It's – I don't like it. It's – seems – Seems pretty weak sauce to me, but it's such a I bad can understand. Pressure. Oh yeah, I agree. Yeah. Um, also, uh, take take the whole avoiding Caden Keiser comment with a grain of salt. That is, of course, reported from Six Hundred Five Sports via um, Live Ticket TV, which is run by the people from Winner. So <laughs> take that with uh, with whatever you want you know maybe they did that for that reason maybe they Might just be didn't want to be biased <laughs> yeah so take that, for, take, take that for what you will um i'm sure they're both great kids honestly yeah i i've always liked kimball white like they've always been nice to me oh yeah they, they've got they, they used to have uh that uh dylan kanichki or can Kanich- yeah Dylan it's yeah they had Dylan on their team yeah Uh, I love him one of my favorites Mm -hmm. um but yeah that's all of the uh wrestlers I had listed do you have any that I might have missed uh I'm trying to think uh I mean it's kind of cool that we have like some number one seeds coming out of like in the tournament coming out of our our region like at 106 with trey weiss Braden's mm-hmm. younger brother who i'm gonna say it again used to be from hill city <laughs> <laughs> gonna say it every time because that's not custer's property they're from hill city don't care what they say but yep. um, i think he's seated number one i think kip cordez at 120 is seated number one uh from also uh from philip uh 32 now 38 now there's another Philip kid that's like that's up there. I know. I just uh, can't remember who he is. Who Simons is. is ranked three. That's it. Yeah. Uh, McCoy Peterson was ranked pretty high. He's I know he's definitely seated. Yeah. And I know that he's been forfeiting a lot of his finals matches because he's just trying not to get hurt more than he already is. Because I think he's got a maybe a, a rolled like a wrecked ankle or ACL thing or something. I really don't know, but yeah, I mean, so I mean, there's there's a lot of good kids coming out of our region that are gonna, I think, are gonna show up. And oh yeah, reason four is gonna look, gonna bring some some medals back for sure. Yep. Um, but yeah, there's there's so many wrestlers, so little time. Yeah, and and, and 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 let's be honest, a lot of great coaches that literally great coaches that literally just wrestled like four years ago in this yeah. in these same in these same state tournaments. It's it's crazy to think about because uh, <clears throat> I don't know if he is this year, but I know the last couple of years for for Lee Deadwood, uh, Carson Pinsky was. Uh, was a state finalist who lost to Kellen Marsh and he uh he is he was assisting down there uh a friend of mine from Siston Caden Metz uh who graduated a year or two before me is now uh coaching down there and his brother is pretty highly seated I think Ian Metz which is kind of funny uh 
it's it's kind of crazy to to see it but you, you know who i would uh who i would be interested in seeing how they do it's all the yeah. wrestlers it's all the wrestlers from harding county i know we talked about yeah. all the people from our region i mean casey olson their coach yeah uh mm-hmm. region coach of the year well deserved i agree um you know i mean they have uh i believe it's gray gilbert i think who yeah. wrestled was did he wrestle louis i think uh i think he wrestled 220 oh, okay oh yep yep you probably you're probably right he probably wrestled tanner um wrestled he, some he he beat the guy from hill city in championship yep, I think. yep 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 that's that that's what happened that, that's why i know the name yeah hc versus hc but, yep that's I mean, kind of a confusing one <laughs> yeah um how often do you think track wrestling is going to uh, implode on itself during this tournament? Dude, I don't even want to start. It's going to be a <laughs> lot. Like, <laughs> like, it always happens. I'm just yep. hoping that this year it'll be slightly less because it's just – it's not track wrestling's fault. It's just – it's not built for that many people to be, like, no. looking at it, let alone everyone is looking at the same tournament. And it's a thousand, two thousand people all looking at it within like a one mile radius. Like yep. it's a huge amount of people like all looking at it. And 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 you have to think that a bunch of people will watch um the matches on on track wrestling on the, watch them on track or on or on the youtube live stream on, yep and it's like a combo between the two because if you go back to watch the matches it plays through track like it's it's crazy like it i don't know if there's really any fix for it because like track wrestling does like the best it can it's just it's not oh, yeah. when it comes to those events it's really hard to to not have things like that happen yep and you have to expect there's probably going to be a considerable amount of people not going to the uh, going to state because of either a the weather because I mean yeah I, I mean look at the snow outside yeah no um, kidding and it's, and, it's suppo- all day. and it's supposed to snow in uh, in the Sioux Falls area tomorrow as well um, great you know, can't wait to drive in that tomorrow. Yeah, partially because of the snow and partially because of the uh, different policies that the uh, Premier Center has. Probably a lot yeah. of people that are brought, probably going to be watching from home. Yeah. But, and, I mean. And there's also the factor of, you know, there's region basketball happening. There's a bunch of uh, basketball happening. I believe there's. No, wait, that's next week that uh, state girls hockey is. But, um, but yeah, you know, there's hockey games. There's a whole bunch of different there, – there's a state amateur uh, basketball tournament in Presho this weekend. Oh, yeah, that's right. I forgot yeah. about that. Um, I won't be there. <laughs> yeah, I mean – Wrestling for life. Yeah, let's, uh, let's also wish um, – the best of health for all of those participating in that. I know that some of them are uh, older gentlemen. Yeah. Uh, So please bring, please bring the icy hot, bring the the bio freeze. Uh, If there's a spare athletic trainer, bring them, Uh, but bring whoever you got to bring to that. Um, Bring your tiger bomb and your athletic tape. Yeah. That's all you need. Uh, I saw a uh, I saw one of the rosters had um, Jim Edmond, who is the father of Jackson Edmond, on uh, oh, really? okay. on on the peer basketball team, uh, mm-hmm. also a basketball referee, also Wyatt Perry's father-in-law, um, okay. teaming up. Uh, he's on the same team as Cruz Garnis. <laughs> <laughs> really? So, yeah, that's, that's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Um, I saw RJ Estes is on a uh, on a roster. Saw a whole bunch of names that I recognize. Yeah. Let's just say that much. And uh, I I don't know how some of those guys are going to survive, honestly. But it's going to be fun to watch. Oh, 
another thing we shouldn't forget on Friday, Lyman plays White River. In yes. Fresh out at the gardens, which, uh, if it's okay with you, can I do a birthday shout out? Oh, yes, absolutely. So, uh, a fan of the podcast and friends of both of ours, Stockton McClanahan, will turn 19 on the 25th on that game. What? So, hopefully, they beat White River. But, yeah. Oh, man. He, ne- he didn't even tell me that on, no. uh, on Monday when I saw him. What a um, butthole. You should text him. If not, I will. <laughs> yeah, you, you definitely will. I, I don't yeah. have his number. I don't I don't have his number or any way of contacting him I, other than do you other than Snapchat? Instagram. <laughs> All right. I, I think Instagram is the only way I know how to contact him, and I don't even think I know how to contact him on there. Um yeah, for sure. But... but yeah, uh, you know, there's obviously the Pierre girls basketball team is going to have their regular season home finale. Yep. On Saturday, the Stanley County boys are having their regular season home finale on Friday. So I will not be able to be at that White River Stanley County game. Mm-hmm. But I will be at Stanley County Cheyenne Eagle Butte. Um, by the way, um, another shout out, uh, shout out Lincoln Keenholz for getting a thousand points last week. Yep. Uh, shout out, uh, former guest on the show, friend of the program, Kirk Bebout for getting his 100th win um, as a coach. Uh, You know, he was the former Hamlin boys basketball coach. Now the Pierre girls basketball coach. So, I mean, lots of, lots of greatness there. Um, And then um, a get well soon for Keller Herman. I don't know if you saw or heard about what happened Mm -hmm. with this. But uh, Keller, he's a hockey player for the uh, Wahi Capitals. He okay. got a uh, pretty nasty injury that caused a little bit of a like a loss of feeling from like his chest down to his oh, waist. That's um, nice. um, I mean, but he's I mean he's just started to get feeling back um, mm-hmm. the other day. He's at home resting. Last time I knew. Um, he's also, he's, I think he's today might've been his first day back at school. Um, but, uh, you know, great kid, great family. His sister's one of our cheerleaders. I love, I love, I love, uh, you know, his family. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, uh, some get well wishes for Keller Herman. Yeah, no, I, it, you hate to see injuries like that, especially, especially when they're so young like yeah so yeah best and, wishes hope, hope he gets better soon and uh i believe the person who inflicted the injury upon him uh was suspended for the next game thank goodness oh um i didn't see it personally i, no, I was I, didn't either. I, I was at regions when it happened so yeah had i had i been there i probably would have jumped over the jumped off the of the ring. you jumped of onto the rink yeah yeah, yeah cuz i would have i would i would have been heated <laughs> <laughs> yeah probably um but yeah uh you know they also have a game uh, a hockey game on saturday so if uh you have any uh spare time uh you can always check out a hockey game. That is true. And is that this Friday? Yes. And that or is, Saturday? In, or sa- I believe it's this Saturday and it's in Sioux Falls. So, okay. Yeah. Might have to check that out then since, since I'll be in the area. Yep. Um, so yeah, that's basically our entire show. What, what do you got, uh, this week? I mean, obviously you're going down, I'm guessing. Oh uh, yeah. I'm, I'm blowing out of here after I get them in class at, three tomorrow so gonna be on my way hopefully i can make it for the last set of matches it's about three hours from aberdeen sioux falls so hopefully i can get there for the the snow should be going uh the snow should be gone by then it should be like it should have already made its way through i I, I, i'm hoping it'll be all right i I saw the future scan and it ran from probably about 10 to about one o'clock 
Holy cow. <laughs> Hopefully it'll be all good. Hopefully they'll have plows out so I can yeah. get on the way and get there yeah. safely. Um, and then, uh, you know, I've already told you what I'm doing. I'm also, uh, tomorrow I have to renew my driver's license. I've, it's been forever since I've had to do that. That sucks, man. That's, that's a pain to do. Yeah. But. I think the last time I renewed my driver's license, the driver's license, the DMV was literally located where, uh, where Burger King is like around yeah. that area. And now it's across the street from my mom's house. <laughs> so I'll have, to, I'll have to get mine done this year too. Yeah. Um, and then, um, uh, you know, I already told you about all the uh, athletic happenings in our area. Yeah. But I also have to, with the, over the next couple of days, listen to a couple of uh, new albums. I think I have Mary J. Blige's uh, new album on the, uh, on the docket. Okay. I also, I also, because I saw that it was uh, the 50th, uh, the 50th year of Billy Joel in music. Billy Joel has been around 50 years. So yeah, I, I suppose that's about right. I am going to review, uh, I believe it's called The Stranger, um, which is one of his, probably his most well-known album. Mm-hmm. It has uh, scenes from an Italian restaurant and, yeah. um, oh shit i forget i forget what the other song is that that glenny told me to listen to but that's on there um Mm -hmm. there's probably another album that i can scrounge up uh it's been kind of a dead period for music honestly a little bit i know for a fact it's picking up soon though yeah i know i know there's a new album that i'm really excited for coming on april fool's day can't wait for it and who is it? Chili Peppers. Ooh. Speaking of Shente's back. Speaking of music, did you see who is coming into town on 419? Snoop Dogg. Right? Yep. Yeah. Which Snoop Dogg is gonna be there. Which uh, who who knows if he's gonna, you know, stick around, be like, you know, you know, concert runs late, it's midnight, it's 420. Yep. Let's smoke. <laughs> let, 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 let's smoke Stay a joint a on longer. stage at the premiere center. Let's oh, do probably. it. <laughs> what do you mean this is illegal, man? <laughs> <laughs> you know who I am. I'm. I'm the. I'm the Snoop D O Double Jizzle. Like <laughs> <laughs> that should be awesome, now. All right. I don't Chris, know if I'll be going Christy to that Noam, one, but... more like Christy No Ma'am, I ain't gonna put this out. <laughs> Probably about right with, with him. Oh man. But uh yeah, uh stick around um uh for the post show uh debriefing and uh thanks for coming on. Yeah, happy to.